and anxiety are not pleasant experiences. As a neuroscientist, I want to understand where in the brain fear and anxiety come from and how they are controlled. If we can understand how fear is controlled, we might develop better therapies for people with clinical anxiety. One thing we don't understand very well is how the brain overrides fear, how an individual goes from avoiding danger to facing it head on. In humans, we might call this courage. By studying mice, I'm able to look for the mouse version of courage. How do I do this? I start by recording the brains of the mice after I put them into a laboratory maze. Now, this maze is not the kind you can get lost in. It only has four arms in the shape of an X. But two of the arms are surrounded by tall enclosing walls that make the space within nice, dark, and cozy. Nice love. And the other two arms are exposed ledges where a predator might swoop in at any moment and grab them. At the center is an intersection, and that's where the magic begins. For example, we've been able to record one brain area that acts like a fear thermometer. This brain area has very low activity in the safe zone, which starts to rise as the mice approach the intersection in the center, and gets even higher when the mice cross over into the risky zones. So we think we can record fear in this brain area, but I'm still looking for that signal of courage, because courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is action in spite of fear. To do this, I've had to zero in on the moments when the mouse is facing a conflict between taking a risk and retreating to safety. The most important place where this happens is right back at the center at that intersection. When the mouse is standing there, they are faced with a conflict between going into a risky room or going into a safe room. Take a risk or retreat. And when the mouse at that crossroads finally starts moving, now they're committing to either a risky arm or a safe arm. Take a risk or retreat. Now, I haven't yet found the signal for courage. But by zeroing in on these key moments, we may be the first to find out. Today, I've talked to you about how, by recording the brains of mice, we are mapping out the basis of fear and courage. But let me remind you why we're doing this. One in three Americans will experience an anxiety disorder in their lifetime. By understanding not just fear, but how the brain overrides fear, we may be able to develop better therapies for those that need it most. Because at the end of the day, if there's one thing I've learned from my research, it's that we're not so different from a little mouse. When we come to a crossroads, we too can be bold. Thank you.